So we come before the Lord in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus who comes to save us, be with you all. Amen. Rose, better known as Pink, for the third Sunday, Gaudete Sunday, rejoice from the epistle. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Have no anxiety about anything. That's a tall order. No anxiety, no fear, no feelings of loss. Well, how do we do that? For the times when we haven't, let us ask the Lord to forgive us and so prepare us to celebrate these mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words to what I've done, what I've failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we receive God's word. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart. O daughter of Jerusalem, the Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, be not discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you as one sings at festivals. The word of the Lord. Afraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. Cry out with joy and gladness. Give thanks. 
make known his deeds proclaim how exalted is his name cry out with joy and gladness for among you is the great and holy one of Israel the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Cry out with joy and reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. Proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The crowds asked John the Baptist, what should we do? And he said to them in reply, whoever has two cloaks should share with the person who has none. And whoever has food should do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized and they said to him, teacher, what should we do? And he answered them, stop collecting more than what is prescribed. Soldiers also asked him, and what should we do? He told them, do not practice extortion. Do not falsely accuse anyone. And be satisfied with your wages. Now the people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Messiah. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Exhorting them in many other ways, John preached good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Well, most of what John said today in the gospel didn't seem very good to me, uh, but it says at the end that he preached good news to the people, and we probably could use a little bit about that now, right now ourselves, right? Uh, some of the things he said weren't very fun. You know, don't take too much money, don't cheat anybody, don't do all the things that the people were normally doing uh, in their situations, uh, but he was trying to tell them about the good news, the gospel, the God spell, the good news, the evangel. Uh, and, and so he, he, he was laying out for them that perhaps uh, they needed to find a new strategy for how they could be the people who make a difference. They could be the people who embody the good news. Of course, that's for you and me too. We are to be the people of good news, of glad tidings. But we can't just ignore the fact that there's a lot of bad stuff out in the world. I mean, you just have to turn on the news for one second to know that the world's falling apart. And if it isn't COVID, it's changes of leadership in uh, St. Anthony's Parish in Manteca. And, and we're all kind of, you know, up in a little bit of an uproar. And, and so Paul comes along and says, but don't be anxious about anything, but in everything rejoice and pray. Well, that sounds good, but how do we do that? What, how can we have a strategy in our own personal lives to do just that, to be that kind of person in the world today, which is pretty dark and pretty, pretty scary out there. I went for a walk this afternoon. Uh, I like to walk, it's, it keeps me uh, moving, and uh, uh, not, not just literally, but also many other ways. And uh, I'm, I, so I was just looking around the neighborhoods and seeing, and one of the things that I, kind of surprised me was this, that there doesn't seem to be a lot of Christmas out there. I mean, there's some. A few houses with a few lights on it, and one has some blow-ups on the roof of, of Santa Claus and so forth. And, but there doesn't seem to be very much. It seems to be that people are kind of in, in a bad place right now, and, and we're kind of fearful. And, and, and when our response to these things oftentimes comes in two, two flavors. One is, is that we want to blame somebody else for my problems. It's their fault. You're on 99 and they just cut you off. It's their fault. Probably is, but don't let them know that. Or the second thing in our society today that we're told over and over again now is, is that in relationship to COVID, in relationship to all the stuff that's going on, we have a tendency to act out. Suicides are up in all age groups. That's really scary. Addiction is up in all groups. And all these things, and these are ways that in our society today we have of trying to, attempting to cope with the reality of what's around us. But it's obviously and clearly not effective. It's not a good strategy, so what is? Now to, tomorrow happens also to be the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe, uh, which is a big thing in the Mexican-American and Latino communities, and maybe for some of you, and, and for certainly for me as well. Uh, and I wanna talk a little bit about that because that may be the key to a strategy that's better than drinking too much or, or, or blaming other people. 1531, 1531, that's a long time ago, almost 500 years ago. An Indian, a humble Indian by the name of Juan Diego. Now that wasn't really his name. That's the Spanish version of his name. He didn't speak Spanish. He spoke another language called Nahuatl. You've probably never even heard of it. But it was the language of the Aztecs and of the indigenous people in Mesoamerica, in Mexico, what we call Mexico today. And he was walking along and he heard music on a hill out in what is today the middle of Mexico City, but in those days was outside. And so he went up on the hill to see where the music was coming from, and he was encountered by a woman in white with a radiant look, and she said to him, my little son, my, my little one, go to the bishop and to ask him to build a church right here on this hill so that I might be venerated because, of course, she was Jesus' mom. She was Mary. She was the mother of God. And so Juan Diego didn't have very much guile in him, apparently, and he went to the bishop, and it took him a while to get in the door because all of the Franciscan brothers were trying to keep him away, as we often find in the church, you know, somebody important comes, and, oh, no, no, you can't come and see him, you can't, you can't talk to her, or whatever it is. But anyway, he finally did get in, and he says, I met this woman, and she asked me to come and ask you to build a church on this little, on this little hill. Naturally, the bishop thought the guy was a nut. 
And so he didn't do it. But he did have enough grace to say, OK, if that's so, then bring me a sign. So Juan Diego was, was mortified that, that he, he, he couldn't he couldn't do what she had asked him to do because she was so impressive and so lovely and so loving. And so he avoided the, the little hill. The little hill's name in Nawa is Tepeyac. It's still called that today. And he, he uh, so he avoided it. And on his way to work in the fields, uh, one, uh, a couple days later, she encountered him on the road and said, so what happened? And he told her that he had failed. So she said, well, go up on the hill. Now remember, this is December 12th. And you'll find a bunch of roses growing there. Pick them and put them in your cloak and take them to the bishop as a sign. So he walked up on the hill, found the roses. They don't grow and they don't bloom in December, right? Not here, not there. And he picked them and he put them in his cloak. And so he brought them to the bishop. And when he got, finally got in, past all the guards and the other friars, uh, he opened the cloak and all the roses fell out on the floor as the sign. But what he didn't know, and the bishop was blown away, was an image of her on his cloak. The cloak is called a tilma. And that's what we have here. That is the image that was on the cloak. The bishop genuflected and said, yep, I'm going to build that church. And they did. They just built a little humble church. Later on, another one, and later on, another one. And now this enormous basilica that can house thousands and thousands of people. And people come from all over the world to see the tilma of Juan Diego with that miraculous image. No one knows how it got there. It was not painted. It is there by some other mysterious, mysterious way. Uh, much has and NASA and other scientists have looked at it and tried to figure it out, but it's just it's, it defies our scientific understanding. But there it is, on a cloak made of cactus fiber that normally would fall to bits in 25 years, and it's almost 500 years now, and it's still there, still intact. The image is still there. Despite all of the generations of, and yeah, if you know Mexicans, you know they love to touch things and they want to kiss things and they want to hang things on it, and they did. Despite all that, despite all the candles and the incense, and even in 1923, a bomb was put in front of it during the communist revolution in Mexico. You may not even know about that, but it's a very important thing for us to know about. The Cristeros were those Christians who, who fought against the persecution of the church. Even that bomb couldn't hurt it. The, the cross that was in front of it, and they still have it, was a metal cross. It's all bent and tortured, and they keep it in a special place in the basilica, but the tilma intact. Why am I telling you this story? This is not just a historical curiosity, although it is that. It's a way of understanding that when we proclaim fearlessly our faith, when we stand up and are counted as Catholic Christians, God can do remarkable things. Blaming other people, misusing our bodies and our everything else in our, in our power, isn't a good strategy to bring us to Jesus. But rejoicing, rejoicing in him, we can find that place where we don't have to have any anxiety. We can truly proclaim that the light shone in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. So maybe the thing echoing the first reading from Sephaniah, shout with joy, O daughter of Jerusalem, ring out your joy. Don't be afraid to be a Catholic. Don't be afraid to be a Christian. Stand up. Maybe the most important thing you can do this year is put the lights on your house. Put, put your, your Christmas tree up. Put your decorations out there so everybody in the world can see. We're rejoicing. Yeah, it's dark. Yeah, it's cold. Yeah, there's horrible things. <clears throat> but we don't have to let that hold us back because when we allow God to work in our midst and when we rejoice in the Lord, miracles. Miracles can happen. Father, as we approach the celebration of the birth of your son, we, we pray that we will have such joy in our hearts 
that we will have the, the power, not the power, but the desire to lift you up and to proclaim you, even in places where perhaps the darkness has really encroached. Help us, Lord. Help us to rejoice even in the dark times so that they may turn to light, so that we may know that the light shines and it has not been extinguished through Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to stand as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father, the Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, or in the Father before all ages. <clears throat> from God, and from light, true God, from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. He will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Through the Father and the Son, he is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in God's care for us, we bring our prayers before him with one voice. For the church and her mission to announce the good news, may God's light illuminate her path, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For those who hold public office, may the Holy Spirit create in them a heart that works to protect the dignity and sanctity of all life. We pray to the Lord. Lord For all who suffer from fear or anxiety, may the Lord comfort them with his healing presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord for an increase in vocations to the priesthood and for all our priests, may Our Lady of Guadalupe intercede for them on their behalf. We pray to the Lord. For this faith community, as we continue our Advent journey, may the Holy Spirit bring us to a renewed awareness of God's presence in our lives. We pray to the Lord. For Father Chad, may our Blessed Mother keep him safe under her protective mantle, and may he find comfort in knowing how much our faith community loves him. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For those who have died in the light of faith, especially Barbara Lehman, Alfred Rappa, Bill Perry Jr., Joseph Cousy Sr., Michael Rogers, May they, may they feast with the angels and the saints in the presence of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Almighty Father, hear and answer our needs this day through your Son, Christ our Lord. So
offering the Mass tonight for Alfred Rapa, Bill Perry Jr., Joseph Cusey Sr., and for Michael Rogers, that they all may be in heaven praying for us. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that we already rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that when he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Pleni sun celi et terra, gloria tua, hosanna in excelsis, benedictus, qui venit in nomine domini, hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. 
until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Myron, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who've pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With longing for the coming of Christ's kingdom, we pray as he taught, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but upon the faithfulness of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other a sign of the Lord's peace. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, Miserere nobis, Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, Miserere nobis, Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, Dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I only say the word of my soul.
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast through Christ our Lord. Giving tree, Christmas in two weeks, we have twice the number of names. As we have gifts, please be generous as you can. Your gift may be uh, the only gift some of these families receive. Gift cards can still be purchased from St. Anthony's School and turned into the parish office prior to December 17th. Thank you for all who have been uh, generously given to our giving tree. Youth group, attention high school and middle school students. Please join us on December 12th and 13th for Life Teen and Edge. This will be our last gathering prior to Christmas. We will resume sessions uh, on January 2nd, 2022. Oh my gosh, we must be getting older. <laughs> CYO, St. Anthony CYO is looking for a volunteer basketball coach, coaches for third and sev seventh and eighth grade teams. Email Bell Estrada to get your paperwork started. Uh, volleyball registration is ongoing. Registration forms are available at the school office. Last day to register is January 31st. It says here 2022, but I think they mean, uh, uh, yeah, that would be right, yeah. Christmas mass times. This year, Christmas is on a Saturday. Please note the following mass times. Friday, December 24th, 4 p.m. English, no 5 p.m., 6 p.m. English, 8 p.m. Spanish, 11 p.m. Bilingual Midnight Mass. Um, Saturday, December 25th, which is Christmas Day, is 8 a.m. English, 10 a.m. English, and 12 p.m. Spanish. There will not be a 9 a.m. weekday Mass on December 24th, Christmas Eve, and no 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. Vigil Masses on Saturday, December 25th. The feast takes precedence. So let me introduce myself. Uh, who is that guy in the pink dress? Uh, my name's Jerry Brown, but don't hold that against me. Uh, as I often say, I'm the real one. That other guy's name is Edmund, and, and my name is actually Jerry. And uh, we've been cycling around each other for, what, 45 years or something like that. Um, and, but anyway, I'm a priest of the Diocese of Oakland. I retired five years ago. My last pastorate was in Brentwood, and, uh, and I, I have family in Lodi, so I would go back and forth all the time. And so when I retired, I moved to Lodi. So I've been very active in the Diocese of Stockton for the last five years. And when the situation came here that the bishop asked uh, uh, that I would come and, and uh, hold the reins uh, for a few months uh, after Father Chad left, uh, and, you know, we're all brokenhearted about that. I didn't know Chad at all, uh, but I, I, I you know, I, I can tell from the way this parish is that he must have been a really wonderful priest. And, uh, you know, the, the, immediately our minds say, well, what did he do wrong? That he, uh, and, of course... He didn't do anything wrong. He wasn't kicked out, but the bishop made it possible for him to continue discerning, to sort of see what God's will is for his life. And that's the thing that we do as Christians and as priests in particular. We, you know, we try to do God's will, and so that's what he's doing. So um, I'm here uh, for a few months to, to help in the transition between uh, Father Chad and the next pastor. Um, so I'm here to accompany you, uh, and I, I'm really delighted to be here. I, I'm, I'm having a great time uh, here so far, and, and uh, it's a wonderful parish, and met a lot of wonderful people so far, and I look forward to meeting all of you. Um, promise I probably won't remember your names right away, but maybe in a good, in a, in a while, I'll maybe remember some of them. And anyway, it's nice to be with you, and, and uh, I, I'm just delighted to be here, and so thank you for your hospitality to me. So let us now stand and ask for... And let us now stand and ask the Lord to bless us. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God.